know, the next man up has already seen two other, three other guys go in there and do it and step up. So he's like, okay, why not me? You know, and I, I, so I think. You have to fight with each other, but I saw a bunch of guys out there that are like, I will not be denied for my brother, for the guy next to me. And I appreciate that. Team on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Quarterback. Most likely. Now, we, we are on the same playing field at that. When he makes a pass to Amari Cooper that is in a tight window with three defenders around him, and Cooper catches it and runs for a 51-yard touchdown, how lit is it? How lit do you get at home? How lit do you get in the stands, in the bleachers? How awesome is it when you have a quarterback well, you don't even, I'm seeing Joe Flacco play. I'm like, bro, don't run. Stop running. Don't run. Do, there's, you do not do one pass where you're on the run. You better be on the jog. You better be on the skip. You better be on, you better not be running. You better be on the walk, boy. Like, I, I don't want to see him doing any more try hard, super roll out to the right and try to make a pass. He looks, A, he looks goofy. And B, it's not going to be a pass that's on target going to hit the dirt it's going to hit the ground one thing that i saw that i i'm as i'm watching the game i see this one passing concept where cedric tillman number 19 he does this little short hitch you know about a four yard hitch right in front of the quarterback shows the numbers and joe flacco fits it in there he fits it in there he fits it in there beautifully pause pause Tillman catches it but there's a defender right there I'm, I'm telling you like by the hair of his teeth I, it was a shock that it wasn't an interception and then late that was in the second quarter and in the third quarter that same route I don't believe it was the same play but the same route was ran by Cedric Tillman interception pick six Tremaine Edmonds Edmonds that was the one that Edmonds pick six so I was absolutely blown away that I was like dang he, 19 ran that route and it was almost intercepted and they bring the, the route back. I can't tell if it was the whole play, but they brought that same route concept where it was exactly Cedric Tillman doing that same route and Edmonds just picked it off and took it to the house. And if you guys look at the grand scheme of the game, like from the way I see it, you guys won 20 to three because you had two boneheaded interceptions by Joe Flacco, one where they took it to the dang near two yard line and the other one where they took it to the house. I, I see a 20 to three victory for the Cleveland Browns. Now, of course, we got to give actual homage. I have to give actual homage to Joe Flacco. He gives you 374 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions. But you won the game. That, that's all he needs to do. That's all his job is. You know, he you don't have a young gun like Joe Burrow. It's not about you making it look pretty, making it look nice. You don't have any standardized old quarterback like a Russell Wilson where it's like, no, you need to make this much. You got a guy that X amount of months ago, he was just hanging out with his kids, just playing ball. And they got the phone call and said, hey, we need you in Cleveland. One guy's hurt. This other guy's hurt. We really don't like our starter. So can you just come back in? And it's like, yeah, yeah I'll come in. And so I mean, I'm sure he's having a great time. I like it. David and Joku, 10 receptions, 104 yards, and the touchdown. And the touchdown that he had, when he made this catch over Jaquan Brisker, I really thought to myself something, and, I, and, I, and you guys just stay with me and, and think about this in real time. Why is it that I always felt that David Njoku should be one of, considered legit, one of the top three best tight ends of the National Football League, but he isn't. And it's because we live in a instant gratification type of world. Okay, so if he's not giving me value fantasy wise, if he's not giving me value through a box score, if he's not giving me value through numbers, he ain't that good. That 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 touchdown that he made over Jaquan Brisker. And, and not even that. When he had that other catch where he tries to jump over a man that's standing straight up. And of course, the man pushes him out of the end zone. I think to myself, I go, why isn't he considered one of the best tight ends in the league? Like he doesn't have one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You know, he doesn't have Patrick Mahomes. He, I mean, he, even Mark Andrews has Lamar Jackson. He doesn't have any of that. He's had a slew of quarterbacks come in and out with no consistency, with no real drive to be the starter and, and, and keep that spot. It's been mayhem. It's always been mayhem for David Njoku at, this, at the quarterback position. So it's like, I see the athletic gifts. And I know in his first few years in the league, his deal was catching. That was his flaw. 
His flaw was the ability to catch. To where if he got that figured out, he was a dude. Something tells me he figured it out. But the quarterback position isn't really solidified. If a tight end can give you 10 receptions for 104 yards and a touchdown, and he is athletic, he's built like a truck, he has all the tools necessary to be great, there is no reason why if you gave David Njoku Patrick Mahomes, I'm sorry this isn't y'all's quarterback, but if you gave him a Patrick Mahomes or a freaking Joe Burrow, you gave him someone that can really dice it up, I cannot sit behind and say, yeah, David Njoku probably would be a top three tight end. Like, legit. You, But you gotta have a guy to give him the ball. You gotta have a guy that can put him in that position. How many quarterbacks throw it away? A lot. All of them. More than likely, it was the smarter decision. But maybe Joe Flacco saw something or just wanted to give his tight end a shot. And he literally mosses the hell out of a legitimate safety in the National Football League. Who's like base guarding him pretty much. And and, and that catch and the, and the multiple things that Njoku did in this game. I was like, damn, that sucks. That his career might go away and, and be forgotten. But no one really knows of what he could have been if he had a legitimate quarterback. I think that needs to be the agenda in the draft. Uh, oh, wait, I forgot. You are tied up to this freaking Deshaun Watson guy for the next two years. I forgot about that. Now, we're not talking about him. Happy Amari Cooper decided to show up. Four receptions, 109 yards, and his amazing 51-yarder touchdown. I love that. And then Mr. Marquise Goodwin, giving some spark, giving some life to the offense. But the man that I want to talk about and the man that I want my Browns fan base to to really give me the insights on is this Cedric Tillman kid. What did we have? I saw the catches he was making. I saw the impact that he had made. I like his sure handedness. What is he? How do you guys feel in what he could be in the future? Are you prominent that he's going to be a legitimate starter? Are you sure that he's a guy that you want to keep long term? What has he shown you? Or tell me a game. Hey, Go look at this game. He did this. Here's your opinion on him. I really, really want to know where the growth of Cedric Tillman can go because I know pre-draft, he wasn't a guy that I said would be bad, but he's just a guy that I, I didn't want to dive into. It was just, he he was out of Tennessee. He was great. I, I thought he had a great body, great NFL body, but I just did, I couldn't, I couldn't pinpoint where he could really succeed. So I'm, I'm bringing it on you guys. I want you guys to also know that Real Friends of Football will beautifully start to incorporate more of our draft content for you guys in the future since draft season is right around the corner so be on the lookout for that the cleveland browns as of right now are on a two-game win streak beating the jacksonville jaguars and beating the chicago bears with with joe flacco at quarterback the next game you guys is against the depleted and defeated texans houston texans as long as this defense led by miles garrett keeps putting these quarterbacks in very very uncomfortable situations guys everything is going to be great and dandy for you guys in your future but it's going to be tough it's going to be great and dandy because you're going to be able to win and keep going you have the texans and you have the jets those should be legitimate dubs y'all should win those both of those games and i'm pretty sure if you win both those games you're headed to the playoffs for sure but that last game against the Bengals, that's going to be the fun game that's going to be a real real test for you guys and you guys already beat the crap out of them once there's no reason why you can't do it again like comment and subscribe